morning, everyone, and uh, shalom, jai masi, praise the Lord. Uh, welcome to class on the Minister's Foundation. I hope you're enjoying studying this publication, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life, and you're able to understand what God is doing in your life, what season of life you are in, and how God is preparing you, OK? Uh, before we continue, can one of you please lead us in prayer? Anyone, quickly? Anyone from our online student can lead us in prayer, please? Online students, anyone can unmute and pray? Please? He Heavenly Father, we just wish to thank you for this hour of study, Father. And we, we pray, Father, that you will minister to us, Father, as we study your word and be able to apply, Lord, whatever we study in your word. And please bless all our teachers, Father, and bless all the students, Father. And uh, continue to walk with us in this journey, Father, as we learn more about your word and apply it in our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sanjay. Uh, so last Friday, we began looking at chapter 3, understanding God's preparation process. So when God, uh, you know, before God launches us into what he wants us to do, or before God puts us into what he wants us to do, he prepares us. Okay, He prepares us for the task ahead. He prepares us to fulfill his plan and purpose. So we looked and uh, we studied the different um, uh, examples or characters in the Bible. We looked at the, the life of um, Moses, right? Who else? David and Paul. Okay. And we saw that when God takes us through the preparation process, what are the two most important things? Godly character, and he wants us to mat be mature in all areas of our life. Okay, And then we went on to look at um, how God prepares us. How does God prepare us? To the word of God, to the Holy Spirit, and through life experiences. Okay, So the life experiences that we go through are a good learning experiences for all of us. Uh, for example, if you look at Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 4, can somebody read that, please? Romans 5, 3 to 4. Who has the mic? Okay, read. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Yes. So what is it saying here? We need to glory in? Tribulation. What is the meaning of glory in tribulation? It's a verb form here. So what is the meaning of glory in tribulation? What is tribulation? Trials, persecutions, hardships, difficulties that you go through. So what does it mean, glory in tribulation? Rejoice when you go through hardships, difficulties, praise God, worship Him. Is it easy for us to rejoice when you go through difficult circumstances and, uh, and situations? No. Why? It's painful, right? But here it's saying glory, which means rejoice, you know, um, give thanks, praise, be positive. Um, why? Because, you know, when you go through tribulations, what is it going to produce in your life? Perseverance. It's going to produce perseverance or endurance and your endurance is going to bring about character okay so uh, an example is if you're going to run a marathon you know it's a marathon what is a marathon a race which you don't finish in in a few seconds okay it'll take sometimes um, hours together to finish that you have to run uh, you know many um, uh, acres or you know uh, area you know a large area of land um so when you're preparing to run a marathon can you just keep practicing 100 meters no you 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 don't just practice 100 meters because you're not just running a 100 meters race okay from here till there till the end 
just a hundred meters. That is that that gets done in a few seconds. But if you want to prepare to run a marathon, you have to, you know, run for a couple of hours. Okay, it takes a lot of endurance and perseverance. So also life is like that when we go through tribulations and difficulties, you know, we uh, we have to endure. We just can't give up. Okay, we just can't um, uh, say that you know. I, am, I, ha I don't want to go through all these problems and difficulties. Why? Because when we go through all of the problems and difficulties, it's going to bring about endurance, it's going to build our character, and, you know, it's going to give us hope. Okay? Look at what uh, James chapter 1 verses 2 to 4 says. James chapter 1 verses 2 to 4 says. Can somebody read that? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Thank you. So here you can pass on the mic to somebody else who wants to read. Can you pass on the mic to somebody else who likes to read in English? Who would like to read the other scripture passages? Okay, Nelson, you like to read? Okay. Okay, so here it says, count it all joy. I think nobody wants to read, so no problem, I'll read it then. Okay, count it all joy. Why should you count it all joy when you fall into various trials or problems? Why should you be joyous when you go through problems and difficulties? So that it produces patience it produces endurance okay and your patience will bring you to a place where you are perfect in every good work okay so that you may be perfect complete and lacking nothing so if you're going through any problems and difficulties you know don't cry out to god and say god remove this you know why are you taking me through all of these things i don't want to uh, you know uh, give me a happy life, give me a comfortable life. But when you go through various trials, count it joy. That means think it is as a joy. Why? Because it's going to, you know, the testing of your faith produces what? Patience. Okay, and patience will have its perfect work and will make you perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Okay, so for example, you know, when you're cooking potatoes, you know, you just don't put it in the pressure cooker or you don't put it in the pan, in, in the water, and then in two minutes you don't remove it off from the fire, right? Would the potatoes be cooked? No. If it, you, even you remove it from the pressure cooker or from the pan, you'll have to put it back. Why? Because, the, you know, the, the potatoes are not cooked. In the same way, some of us, you know, we don't want to uh, go through sufferings and difficulties we run away from difficulties we run away from hard times you know we think uh, okay this is not working for me let me go into somebody something else we jump into something else but you know what happens even there we are going to face problems and difficulties okay so even if we jump out and we want to run away you know god may ensures or god makes sure that we get back into the same pressure cooker why because all of the problems, the difficulties that we're going through is the testing of our faith is going to develop patience and endurance and character. And that's when we are going to be perfect and complete. Okay, that's what this verse says. Perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Hebrews chapter 5 verses 8 and 9. Can somebody read that please? Hebrews 5, 8 and 9. Though he was son. Yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Yes. So how did, um, you know, um, you know, even when Jesus learned all things, suffered all things, what did he do? Did Jesus go through suffering and pain? Yes. Okay. What did he do? learn when he went through sufferings? obedience right he learned obedience even as he went through suffering so when jesus had to go through suffering and learn obedience then how you know how can you and i get away from 
all the problems and difficulties and how other way that we can learn obedience than suffering okay because jesus himself went through um suffering so you know what makes us think that you know we can learn uh, our obedience elsewhere when jesus himself went through sufferings okay so life experiences will teach us lessons that we cannot learn elsewhere okay when we go through problems and difficulties all the life experiences that we go through you know will teach us lessons that we cannot learn elsewhere some lessons we have to learn you know even as we go through those life experiences and then we cannot deny a man with experience that means those who've gone through difficulties those who've gone through hardships they've come out they've learned you know we cannot deny a man with their uh, experience okay so when we are going through difficult times don't take the escape route don't run away go through it the god will give you the strength god will give you the grace uh, to go through it and god will bring you through it and when he brings you through it you will be you know perfect and complete and ready for every good work that god has in store for you okay now we look at the things to keep in mind even as we go through the preparation process so what are some of the things to keep in mind even as we go through the preparation process the first one is we must learn to cooperate with god okay so even as we go through the preparation process that god has for us we need to cooperate you know we've already spoken about this so i'm not going to you know um uh, explain you know we need to listen to what god is saying we need to go through difficulties trials uh, it, it's taking time learn patience learn what god is telling you to uh, learn uh, change the areas in your life mature you know build up your character and so we need to cooperate with god okay so what you need to do is just sit and you know speak to god and say god what are you trying to accomplish uh, through my life in this season of my life what are the things that you want to build in my life in this season you know uh, show me god where are the areas that you want me to change where are the area the the areas of my weakness my character where you want me to uh, change show me god and help me to build a strong a character a, be a mature person uh, change me in my areas of my weakness so when we when we pray and ask god he shows he reveals and we need to cooperate with god with what he's saying and you know learn to work on those areas in our lives and build on those areas the second thing is your attitude matters okay you've you've heard this before your attitude determines your altitude your attitude de determines your altitude that means your attitude what is your attitude means how you look at life how you look at problems how you look at difficulties how you look at change if you're going to be grumbling murmuring complaining you know going to be lazy not doing anything about it uh, you know just take life as it comes that's a wrong attitude but if you have an attitude that is you know god whatever the circumstances is i'm going to learn you know what are the changes you're going to bring through me god even as i'm going through this difficult situation even as you're molding my character help me god help me to cooperate with you and when we do that when we cooperate with god you know god takes us higher up in life altitude so takes us higher up if we have the wrong altitude we will not move up in life okay we will not progress in life we will not see prosperity we will not see promotion we will not see progress the third one is consistency um, consistency is where the power is okay first timothy um, chapter 4 verse 15 can somebody read that please first timothy chapter 4 verse 15 meditate on these things give yourself self entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all yes so it says meditate on all of these things give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all okay um so how are you going to progress in life how are you going to progress in life how are you going to move ahead in life huh 
what does this verse say? How are you going to progress in your life? When you give yourself completely or entirely, okay? So you give yourself, give your all to what God is asking you to do, where he's taking you, what is his plan and purpose for your life, okay? So consistency is where the power is. So you need to be consistent. That means not jumping from here to there, okay? So maybe some of you say uh, have finished you know, 12th standard, you tried something that was not working out. So you said, okay, I'll come to Bible college. Now you come to Bible college, you're saying, hey, I didn't think Bible college, we had to wake up at five o'clock, we had fasting prayer, so much of studies, so much of things to do, it's so hard. I'll go, go back and do something else. I'll start a business or I'll do this or I'll do that. That is not being consistent, okay? So consistency is where the power is, which means that we need to be consistent in what God has called us to. And when God tells us to move, then we move. But when God has placed us somewhere, we are there, we are learning, we are improving, we are doing what God has called us to do. Okay. The fourth thing is, as you are faithful in little things, God will promote you to the next. Okay. Matthew chapter 25, verse 23. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Amen. So here, this is the parable of the talents, okay? Where the, the man who was given five talents, what did he do? What did the, the man with the five talents do when his master came back? What did he do? Remember the parable of the talents? No? He multiplied it and he earned five more. So he worked hard, he multiplied it, and he got five more. And what, what does the master say? You have been well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over few things. I will make you ruler over many things. So the master saw that this man who he had given five talents, maybe 5,000 rupees. So when the master gave him 5,000 rupees, the master went away on a journey and he came back. And then when he came back, he takes into account what he's given his workers. So the one who had 5,000 rupees multiplied it and got 10,000. He worked hard, he got 10,000. So what does the master say? You have been faithful in? little things but now i will make you ruler of bigger things okay so uh, you know if you're faithful in the little things that god has given you he will promote you to the next and this is the law of progression in the kingdom of god so in the kingdom of god if you want to progress if you want god to promote you take you higher make you someone of importance of influence it means that you need to be faithful in little things which means now as a student you need to be faithful in you know what god is entrusting you with he's entrusting you with the time to study his word truths revelations molding your character learning skills for ministry so you know god is going is looking at you how faithful you are see how faithful you are with the time, with the opportunities, with the talents, with the gifts that he has given you, the, the, the opportunity to even study, to learn his word. And if you're faithful, what is he going to do? After you finish your studies and you start your ministry, he's going to make you ruler over greater things. That means he's saying, hey, here is a person who I can entrust something big. Why? Because I know he or she is going to be faithful but if you've not been faithful with the time that god has given you here you know in the bible college or you know if you've not been faithful with what god has given you in your life so far you know you just come eat sleep you just enjoy yourself you know god is not looking at you as someone who is that you know that person who got one talent thousand rupees so to say and what did he do he didn't do anything with it he took it and buried it in the ground and when his master came he's just giving back the 
thousand rupees. So what does the master do? He's so angry with him. He takes away that money, gives it to those who have multiplied it. And then he says he throws him into the darkness where there's weeping or gnashing of teeth. That means, you know, into eternal hell. So God is a God who looks for fruits in our life. He's looking for fruits. He's looking for rewards. He's not just given, you know, everything, blessings, and he's not just bestowed upon us his gifts and his grace, but he's looking for rewards. He's looking for fruits. So remember the fig tree? When Jesus was hungry, yes, he saw the fig tree, and the fig tree uh, had leaves in it, which means it was time for it to bear fruit. Okay, so if the fig tree has leaves, that means it is time for it to bear fruit, and it did not have any fruit. And what does God, what does Jesus do? Curses it, right? And it dies. So when sometimes we can pretend that hey, we are doing everything, we are good, but you know there is no fruit. And that time God is going to, you know, take away even the little that he has given to us. So some of you, you know, want to become big pastors, big evangelists, missionaries, do great things for the kingdom of God. It's important that you are faithful in small things. And that is a law of progression in the kingdom of um, God. Okay. So the fifth one is beware of complacency, uh, which means, what is the meaning of complacency? Don't be complacent. What's the meaning of complacency? Lethargic, okay? Sometimes we are just very satisfied. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. I can speak in tongues. I'm going to heaven. Okay, Aram says sit down. Comfortably sit down. Enjoy your life, okay? And we say, okay, when God wants to tell me his plan and purpose, let him tell me. I will just let them see what I can do okay so we need to be careful of being in that place we need to allow god to stretch us you know sometimes when god gives us things to do it it, it does not mean we just sit back and sleep it's going to be easy it's going to be hard we have to labor we have to work hard okay um and so sometimes when we go through the preparation process it, we are tempted to take things very very easily okay and you'll say, hey, anyway, God has not started his plan and purpose for my life. He's just preparing me. Let me take it easy. I'll just go through this. Okay. But we need to understand that if we are complacent, things will not happen in our lives. We will be forever, amen, in the preparation process. Okay. God cannot launch us into the plans and purposes that he has for us. And the changes that God wants to bring in our lives cannot be brought about because we are complacent, okay? So allow God to stretch you, right? You know, when a, a woman is having a, carrying a baby in, uh, in, uh, in their womb, what happens? The stomach stretches, right? The stomach stretches to accommodate the baby for the baby to grow, and at the right time, the baby is born. What if the woman says, hey, I don't want my stomach to stretch. You know, I don't want this to happen. You know, the, the, the woman cannot have a baby, okay? So the woman is willing to accommodate all of these changes. So we also need to allow God to stretch and we need to uh, uh, stretch ourselves and also go beyond ourselves, okay? So God's calling for our lives is a higher call, a greater price and something that we need to really pay a greater price for. So... You know, do things that God has asked you to do in the season. And even as he's preparing you for the next season, you know, work with God. It, it requires a lot of hard work. Okay. So this, um, the sixth one is preparation time is not wasted time. The greater the calling, the greater the preparation. You know, we saw that, um, you know, in the life of Moses, in the life of David, in the life of... Uh, Paul, okay. For for Moses, how many years was the preparation time? Forty years. For uh, David, twenty-three years. Okay, from he was seventeen when he was uh, anointed as king. He became king at the age of thirty. So thirteen years. Sorry, thirteen years. Yeah. Um, uh, and Saul, how many years?
very good 17 years 33 years when god you know um called saul and uh, had an encounter on the road to damascus and he was 50 years when he began his first missionary journey so how many years did it take for jesus 30 years so don't be in a hurry okay uh, greater the uh, calling greater the preparation so don't say hey god i have you know finished one year bible college two years three years bible college you're not doing anything with my life you know um, i want to be this big evangelist big pastor i want I'm, I'm thinking and dreaming all of these things hold on you know be patient god is going to bring you there but greater the calling greater the preparation the seventh one is you know um, uh, another example we can take for this point six is if you want to be an mbbs doctor how many years you have to study five and a half years right okay but if you want to become a surgeon or you want to do an md maybe seven and a half years okay so greater the calling greater the preparation okay so be patient with god seventh one is don't be hasty let the preparation season run its full course okay can somebody read a proverbs chapter 21 verse 5 please sister can i read yes please sister get through you can go ahead uh, yeah proverbs 21 5 the plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty yes amen so here it says that those who are hasty hasty means what those who are very quick jaldi jaldi you know fast fast everything you know you want it very quick what will what will happen you will end up in poverty you become poor okay poor not just in the terms of finances your money but in every area of your life okay um so for example if you're going through a difficult situation you want to come out of it quick you want to you know god to get you out of all of those difficult situations quick and end those difficult situations hey god has a timing and a plan and he's taking you through it just be patient endure god will give you the strength and he will take you and he will bring you out perfect and complete okay so let each um, preparation process run its full course okay that means go through the full preparation process and the last one point eight is the things that we need to keep in mind as we go through the preparation process is stay within your calling and your gifting don't try to become something that you are not designed to be okay don't try to become something whom god has not called you to be okay so here we see in bible college everyone likes to worship okay so all of you who are also never been in your worship team in your church or son you want to be part of the worship because pa worship is such a uh, integral part of bible college everyone loves to worship you know everyone is learning instruments they want to lead worship which is good but that doesn't mean that because somebody else has an anointing and a calling to lead worship you know that you also should become a worship leader okay it doesn't mean that you know when you look at um, uh, you know pastor ashish and you see oh what a big church he has and you know what good ministry beautiful wonderful ministry is doing and all of i also want to become a pastor okay it's good to desire but you need to know what god has called you to be what he has designed you to be and whatever he's designed you to be stay within that calling and that gifting okay don't jump out okay so for me you know my calling and gifting is to be among children and also my calling and gifting is to teach so i teach and i also minister among children i can't say okay i'm ministering to children nobody is seeing me i'm not on stage so i want to become a pastor so that i can be on stage everyone can see me i can come on tv i can you know everyone knows i, I can become famous hey i'll be at the wrong place doing the wrong thing and i will not receive the grace of god i will not receive the anointing that is needed for that and i will also not be able to bear fruit i'll be fooling myself and i will also be fooling people so stay within your gifting and your 
anointing. It might not be glamorous. You know, you might just be an evangelist. Nobody will know you. You might just be a missionary. Nobody will know you. Okay, it's not important. But it's important for you that God knows where you are and that you are in the right place, in the right time doing what he wants you to do. Are you able to understand? Amen? Okay, so don't look at others and, you know, think oh, that is your gifting and calling. You need to, um, you know, wait on God and do what is the right thing uh, uh, that he's asked you to do. Now, in every season of your life, there are two things that you need to keep in mind. In every season, there is you will find execution and you will find preparation. Okay, that means in this, which what season of life are you in person, students? All of you are in. You are a you are a student, right? This is your season of your life where you are a student, you are studying. So you are in a season where you have to execute. What do you execute? What's the meaning of execute? Which means you have to study. Okay, you have to learn things, you have to grow in things, you have to prepare yourself for the ministry. Okay, so, uh, sorry, you're, you're learning things, you are a student, you are studying, you are, uh, you know, going through the discipline of a student, you know, timing and everything. So you are executing what you need to do in this season. Also, in this season as a student, you are also preparing yourself for the next season of life okay you're preparing for the next season of life so for an example for example if a you know husband and wife are uh, uh, you know two people a man and woman are going to get married so they are in the season where you know they're preparing themselves for marriage so they're getting to know their uh, their partner they're getting to uh, go through you know counseling marriage counseling courses they're thinking about what to do planning at the same time they're not just sitting back and thinking only of marriage right or only preparing for their marriage what are what are they also doing they're doing their jobs right they have their own jobs what is their calling what is their gifting they're working they are also doing their everyday routine so there is execution that they're doing that season but they're also planning for the next season of their life which is marriage okay so in every season there is two things there is execution and there is preparation for the next season so god also prepares you for the uh, next season of life okay you know, um, so when God is preparing you, um, you know, why is he preparing you for the next season of life? So that he can, you know, prepare certain aspects of your character. So, for example, you're single now, you're, you know, you're working, you're planning to get married, but God is preparing you for marriage. In marriage, there's a lot of things that we have to give up, you have to... You know, you have to become, you have to take on. So God is going to mold your character, certain aspects of your character. He's also going to mold certain aspects of your attitude. Okay. So allow God to do those things, even as he's preparing you for the next season of your life. Be faithful and cooperate with God because God wants to build in you for the next season of your life. You know, godly character, he wants you to bring Bring your life to um, a, a place of maturity because for God, your character is important, your maturity is important before he releases you to the next season of your life. So if, if marriage is taking a long time in your life, you can ask God, God, what, you know, character, attitude in my life that I have, you know, have to change my weaknesses uh, that you want me to change so that you can prepare me for my next season of my life. So if something is, you know, uh, is not happening in your life, you need to go back and ask God, God, am I doing what is right in this season? Is there something that I'm not doing right? Show me. God, even as you have a plan for me for the next season, uh, is there some character, some attitude, some things that I've not aligned myself to your will? Help me, God, show me. And when God shows you, you change, and then you see he will open up the next season of your life are you able to understand okay so this is what we need to do even as god takes us through the preparation process okay so any questions any questions on this chapter we go on to the next chapter 
chapter 4. Uh, online students, you have any questions? Okay. There are no questions. We'll move on to chapter 4. Uh, another thing that we need to do, even as we fulfill God's plan and purpose for our lives, is positioning ourselves. What is the meaning of positioning ourselves? Simply means that we need to be at the right place, the right uh, time, doing the right thing. Three things. Okay. If you want to fulfill God's plan and purpose for your life, there are three things that you need to do. You need for positioning yourself. You need to be at the right, right place. Okay. Right time and doing the right thing. Okay. Can we say that again? Right place, right time and doing the right thing. Okay. So look at the example of Esther, Esther chapter 4, verses 12 to 14. You know, we know that Esther, what was the seed in Esther's life? Her beauty. Yes. Good. So it was her beauty. And, you know, we know that Esther was a Jew. But because of her beauty, she was brought to the palace and the, the pagan king, King Hasuras, you know, took, took her as his as his wife, okay? So we can say, how can God, you know, when God told the Jews that you cannot marry pagans or Gentiles, how did God allow this? So God had a plan and a purpose. And Esther had to position herself at the right place, the right time, doing the right thing. So uh, after Esther became the queen, the wicked Mod, uh, Haman, you know, he told the king to write a law where all the Jews will be killed on a certain day. Okay. And Esther's uncle hears about this law, this rule, and uh, he's mourning and he's, uh, you know, in ash, put ash on his head and in sackcloth and he's sitting. And when Queen Esther sees from her window, she's wondering what happened to her uncle. Why is he mourning? So he, she comes to know that this is the law that the king has passed and um, you know her uncle sends her her um, you know um, um, you know a request telling her that she has to go before the king and she has to tell the king what is you know what the wicked Haman's plot is and how she should bring about deliverance for her people okay and um, you know, Esther is saying, you know, I haven't gone into king's presence for three months. The king hasn't called me and I can't just go into his presence. If I go into his presence, he's going to kill me. OK, uh, we, uh, uh, the queen even cannot go into the king's presence without his permission. So what does um, uh, her uncle send back, you know, uh, the message saying that, you know, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Okay, who knows that God has brought you to this place or this position as a queen for such a time as this so that you can help delivering your people. Okay, so we see that, you know, Esther positioned herself. She, she and the people fasted and prayed and she went into the king's presence. The king, um, you know, gave her permission and she was able to save her people okay so we see that esther you know at the right at the, she was at the right place at the right time doing the right thing and she was able to save her people okay so positioning ourselves is very very important why is it important because if you position yourself right you will receive the provision of god sometimes we are in the wrong place, doing the wrong things, and we're wondering why God is not blessing us, why there is no fruit, why there is no prosperity, there is just pro poverty, there's just pain, sorrow, there is no breakthrough, no joy, nothing. But we need to know that the kingdom of God is righteousness. What is the kingdom of God? The characteristic of the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy okay that is a characteristic of the kingdom of god so if you are in a place where you are not experiencing peace and joy and there's 
things are not going right, then you know that you are in the wrong place, doing the wrong things uh, um, at the wrong time. Okay. So if we want the provision of God, we have to position ourselves right. So if you're not experiencing the provision of God, God does not want us to live in poverty, you know, struggling and in, in um, you know, uh, no food to eat, clothes to wear, you know, um, he wants us as his children to enjoy every blessing. But if we are not, then we need to ask ourselves, hey, am I in the right place doing the right thing, you know, at the right time. So if you want to receive the provision of God, we have to be in the right place okay now look at elijah elijah in chapter 17 elijah had to go and tell king ahab that there is not going to be any rain in the land now elijah goes to the king's presence without his permission and he gives a bad news to the king and surely he's going to be killed so you know even though god tells him to do something hard and difficult, he does not question God. He just obeys. So he goes to the king's presence. He tells king the message and God, and he just runs for his life because he knows the king will catch him and, you know, put him to death. And as he is running, God tells him, go to the brook of Cherith. That means go to the stream, you know, stream, a small stream water running, okay? in the forest, in the wilderness, go and stay there and I will send the ravens to feed you. That means ravens are black crows. They will bring you food to eat. Now, what if Elijah would have said, God, how can I go here to the wilderness? You know, the soldiers will be looking for me. Why don't you send me to some cave, some mountain to hide in the, in the open area near a stream? Anyone can catch me. And God, how can you send food to the ravens? They are unclean birds. And we can't eat anything from unclean um, you know, uh, uh, mouths or unclean animals. So how can you send ravens? But we see that uh, you know, Elijah obeyed God. He went to the brook of Cherit. He stayed there. And because he stayed there, God protected him. And God provided for him. The soldiers were not able to find him. And he was given food to eat every day. Um, and he also had water to drink. When the people around were suffering because of famine, there was no food to eat. There was no water to drink. Are you all with me? OK, I'm telling you a nice story so you all don't fall off asleep. OK, so then God, once the that stream dries, OK, God tells him, go to Zarephath. And there you will find a widow, OK? And the widow will give you food to eat. So if what if Elijah would have said, God, how can I go to Zarephath? That is a wicked queen, Jezebel's place. They will come looking for me in every village and every town. Okay, and how can I stay with a widow, you know, without any husband? And I'm an unmarried man. And how can this poor widow feed me? But we see that no questions asked. He just goes to Zarephath. He sits down there. He sees a poor lady collecting sticks he knows she's going to make some food to eat and has a son and he knows that this is the widow lady and he tells her to you know, give him food and this lady also obeys and so we see that even though people in that same village or town did not have food to eat and water to, to drink god provided for elijah and this widow why because they were at the right place the right time you know, doing the right thing, what God want, wanted them to uh, do, okay? So, so also in our lives, you know, you know, um, even as we are, we need to position ourselves, right? So if you're saying, God, you know, I'm studying in this Bible college. So you should look at what you are doing, whether you're studying, whether you're working, you're married, where you are living, everything, we must see it as something of significance, something very, very strategic, something that God is doing in your life to further the kingdom of God. So if you're studying in a college, you know, it's not just to get a degree, but you're saying, God, I'm studying in this college, not just to do a, get a degree, but I'm studying in this college, you know, to equip myself to do something of significance in the kingdom of God. If you are in a job, you know, you're not just saying, God, I'm in this job 
just to earn some money for my bread and butter, you know, so that I can live a happy life, so that I can buy what I want and live how I want and have all the comforts. That's important, yes. But also you're saying, God, I'm looking at this job as something of significance, something very strategic that you have placed me for the furtherance of your kingdom. So, so also with marriage, so also the place that you live, you know. Everything that we uh, see in life, we look, we need to see it as connected to, you know, being at the right place, the right time, doing the right thing for, so that you are building the kingdom of God. You are fulfilling the purpose of God here in your life. You have a divine mission, okay? And it's also a place of influence for the kingdom of God. God, even in the house where you are living, you're saying, God, you put me in this house here. You have a divine mission. You have a divine purpose. Uh, I'm here for an in to be an influence to my neighbors around. You put me in this job. You know, strategically, you placed me here. I want to be of significance. I want to build your kingdom here. I want to have influence for the kingdom of God in the place that you have put me. So everything that we see in life, we need to look at it as something of significance and something of importance okay the third thing is we need to be positioned to be protected okay uh, psalm 91 says that he who dwells in the secret place of the most high will abide under the under his shadow look at what verse 9 of psalm 91 says it says because you have made the lord who is uh, uh, your God, you know, he will be your refuge. Verse 9 says, um, let me read that. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. Okay? So our protection in life is connected to the fact that we are in the most, in the, uh, in the dwelling place of the most high. Okay, so if we are in the right place, in the dwelling place, under God's covering, in His will, in His purpose and plan, we receive the protection and the promise that God has made here in verse 9 holds good that no evil can befall us. So, as long as the Most High is my dwelling place, and as long as I'm dependent on the Lord, the Word of God says that as long as under the shadow of His wings, I receive protection. And what is the secret for our protection is that we are positioned right. We are in the dwelling place of God. We are in the under the shadow of His wings. We are totally dependent on Him. Okay. We'll stop here and we'll come back after the break.